ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor and privilege tonight to introduce Daniel Ohl, who is currently serving as a professor of urban design and planning and landscape architect at Cornell University. He studied at the University of California, Berkeley, and Harvard, and worked for four major cities in the world for over 10 years, including uh, studying with San Francisco, Hong Kong, and London and New York. Since 2010, he has been teaching at the uh, Korean University, started with the Gwangbuk University and now at Korea University. He's going to speak today on a very interesting topic of remembering Yongs and Garrison, uh, an urban memory archive project. So without further ado, let's welcome Professor Ho with a big round of applause.
So um, I thought hard about how to start this presentation, um, but I want to begin by showing you a video clip. So this is a video clip, um, not long, it's only a minute and a half. And this is a, uh, and you don't need to hear the sound, but it's, it looks like it's any alleyway uh, that you will find. This is in Hanam, um, uh, Hanam village, the back side of the Hanam village. It's uh, close to Hangangin station. Um, and, and basically I'm walking down. The, So it's, you know, I'm sure you are very familiar with this sort of uh, urban scape uh, with a lot of uh, shops and restaurants. Uh, and in the distance, you start to see uh, Hanan Village, which used to be a uh, 570th ward. Um, and later on, it was called Niblo Barracks. And then they uh, converted into a housing for uh, U.S. Army uh, personnel and families. And um, recently, there have been a lot of posts on this uh, compound, uh, which is now going through a, a, a development um, to house a very luxurious um, uh, condos. So that's the entrance, uh, you see. It's, I think it's still there, um, if you'd like to. But it's sort of, you know, I'm sure you've all walked in these type of alleyways. So, um, and the reason I'm showing you this clip is because um, there was um, a person um, that uh, who was very dear to us, um, to the team, um, and and. He, his story tells, I think, uh, the, the, his story is the essence of, of what we're trying to capture. And we, we sort of come back to his story over and over again because we feel that this represents the reference for what we are trying to do. Um, so his name is George Brin. Um, he's now 84 years old. He was in Korea briefly from 1958 to 1959. Um, and he met this person, uh, Marie Huang, um, and they dated and they uh, lived together um, in the uh, area that uh, I just showed you. Um, he was 21 years old when he was in Korea, and he was an auto mechanic. Uh, he now lives in Florida. So this was a photo from him, uh, 1959, uh, the entrance of uh, Hanan village, uh, 570 is board coordinate uh, uh, then, now it's Hanan village. Now it's all demolished, all these uh, housings are uh, sort of boogled uh, down now, ready for Portland, um, Marine. And that's the alleyway that I showed you, took a video of. And, and we superimposed this sketch on top of the area photo of 1960s and now. And you can see some of the infrastructure that is uh, the road layout and, and uh, parks and things very similar, right? Um, to today. Leum Museum is uh, right about here. 
So this is him now. He's been searching for Marie for the last 15 years, now 16 years. Um, he's, uh, he's married, he has kids, he has grandkids. Um, but he feels that he, um, I mean, there, I'm sure that he has a lot of things going on in his mind. And he's, he's on the verge of getting depressed. Um, uh, he may require some medication. And, and this is something that he needs to get over, um, he feels like. He just wants to find Marie, or just hear about, uh, uh, about Marie and how uh, she's doing. Um, it's not that he wants to, you know, uh, rekindle love or anything like that, but he's really um, sort of, you know, um, heartfelt about the, the fact that he left her in Korea. Uh, he has promised to take her uh, to state and um, uh, promised a lot of, you know, things. And I, I think he feels, I don't know, I, it, it's hard to put it in words. I think we had video, we had video conferences and, and um, my wife Coco has uh, about 400 pages of um, correspondence with um, uh, George since we got in touch with him last uh, July or June. And he's been uh, very, very active um, with Yongsan Legacy because in the hopes that he may find Marie through this project. And so we've, we've been helping, you know, posting uh, uh, posters on the streets. Um, but obviously, it would be very, very difficult to find her. Before uh, 1960s, um, and, and, and it's, it's almost impossible to find any um, uh, traces um, of Marie. Um, so I, I, I want you to sort of go over, I want to read a, a, a portion from his email. Um, uh, he talks about how poor Korea was, and, and this is a letter to his grand, uh, grandkids. Children. And he says, each time I would walk up the hill into the village, the Korean children and adult civilians would have a smile for me. I would sometimes say, oh my darling Clementine, that Marie taught me in Korean, and this would bring laughter from the Korean civilians. Surely all decent GIs left part of their heart in South Korea. So this sort of, I don't know, I, uh, for me it was it stirs up something in me, and something that I, it's, it's, I think it really uh, touches on human psyche, that it, it, um, uh, it really, it, it's a story that, um, that we would, you know, would like to hear, and, and um, like to help. Uh, uh, so if you were to walk, Whenever I visit Itaewon again, I, uh, my wife and I try to swing by this road. Um, just because it, it's, you know, I know, 50, you know 70 years ago, uh, George has walked that road, the same road, to see his loved one. And um, it sort of I mean, we did a lot of things together uh, with my wife and other, other team members uh, to come up with a, a way to make this uh, George's story and also um, uh, this sort of dynamic that exists in urban fabric uh, be imparted to other people and, and they, they could feel the same way. That sort of intrinsically that's the goal and aim of uh, of um, of uh, and legacy as I, I see it. Um, so if, if you want to see the video again, I'm sure you, you would sort of see it in a different light. Um, and I, and I think that's where it, it has a, such power in creating this sort of uh, another layer. Um, augmenting an existing urban um, environment 
This is something that you feel and you feel associated, um, rather than just an infrastructure that that's cars and people walk. And and since the beginning I, um, uh, of the project, I I had this sort of list of questions in my mind. Um, the reason, after working for many um, firms, um, I, I decided to go into teaching because there was something in me that I, I believed in urban um, uh, public open spaces, um, the value of public open spaces, um, that it, it can be a lot more. Um, it, it should do a lot more. It's not just infrastructure. It's not just a piece of land that the public owns, but rather it, it can capture the imagination and inspiration and it can motivate, motivate people. Um, so I think um, urban designers uh, uh, are starting to ask these questions um, in different realms. It's not just about open spaces, but uh, because urban designers deal with the public space, public infrastructure. Um, in a way, everyone's owner, but then there's no ownership. No one really claims the ownership of public open space. Um, so, things like Yongsan Garrison, how do we remember a place like Yongsan Garrison? It's 70 years old. There are about 3.5 million GIs passed through that place. That's not counting the family members, friends, it's a, it's a history itself, right? But now it's going to get turned over to Koreans, right? and uh, they're, they're trying to build a park. Uh, they're not saying it's irrelevant, the story and the history of the site, but they don't even know how to make it right, uh, relevant for themselves. What do we keep and what do we delete? Is it, is it simply choosing one versus another? Or can public spaces bring people together and bridge social, race, racial, and generation gaps? Can we design and deliver public spaces that embody public value and inspire human spirit? These are some of the questions that I had um, even before sort of I, I, I got to start on Yongsan um, uh, project. So before I begin, I, I don't want to disappoint anyone. I'm not going to talk about Yongsan Park master plan. Um, the, the reason I'm, I'm going to explain you uh, later, uh, but it's uh, I'm going to talk about Yongsan legacy. It's an archival project that, um, that we're trying to make the stories and, and, and the people be part of uh, 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 something greater that can be um, used in sort of uh, layering a urban space. Uh, uh, so I, I, I like I said before in the beginning, I wanted to sort of, uh, there's so many aspects of Yongsan Garrison, and there are so many sort of disciplines that can uh, sort of address um, uh, about, let's talk about Yongsan Garrison. But I want to focus on the, the aspect that I, um, I, I can speak on my, uh, from my expertise, and, I, and therefore, I want to talk about Yongsan Legacy Project from a urban designer's point of view. It's not an archival project by sociologists or anthropologists or geograph geographers. It's a, a archival project um, uh, which I sort of started and structured it so that it could create a better public open space. So this is an uh, outline, uh, we'll go rather quickly. Um, so th this is the master plan. This is uh, currently um, how it, uh, it sort of stands right now. Um, after 
President Moon, um, Jimmy Power, uh, in the Blue House, things may turn in, in, a, in it may take a different direction, um, but no one knows right now how this design will go. And um, there are talks about uh, the doing the design, um, or the some some uh, um, scholars already have said that they want to take out the park. They want to say memorial. It should be a Yongsan memorial instead of a park. Um, which makes sense for some, but um, a lot of people want a, a greenery inside a very dense um, urban um, city. Right? So that also makes sense. Right? Um, the process of uh, making Yongsan Garrison or turning, uh, transforming Yongsan Garrison into a park began in 1990. Um, took 20 years to get this far. Right? The, the project, the design project, started in 2012, um, so it took about 20 years to get the, the protocol right, the process, um, to deliver a part which simply didn't exist. The framework, the legal framework didn't exist. So it took 20 years to get to that far, right, to get to the master plan. They haven't, you know, they haven't really gone in yet. Um, so. Who knows how long it's going to take to actually build it. Um, as a result, um, result of an international design competition, uh, West State uh, is a Dutch company. Uh, they're the master planner uh, for the park. Um, and they, uh, uh, they undertook that um, uh, project in 2012. And I was... Uh, uh, a part of the master planning team. So I, I know so ins and outs of the, the dynamics of how this park was designed and, and um, uh, maneuvered uh, through uh, this sort of political uh, scene, right? uh, political landscape. It's, uh, 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 it's, it's a very, very complicated and, and frustrating process, um, not to say the least. least. And, and the design itself is, uh, as I mentioned at the bottom, the design team had literally almost zero information about the base because it, it is a military, active military base. And so um, I remember going into a um, secure zone where you have to sign a log and um, all the GPS coordinates are off, so that in case of you know releasing it to the North Korean and so forth. So it was a very, very high secured uh, project which had no information. So I sort of as a as a team member it was a very difficult project to um, undertake because you are given blank canvas to design a park. Right? Literally you have you know, outlined the building, but you don't know what that building represents. Um, and um, anyhow, uh, uh, so I, I, most people, when they hear about Yongsan, um, Yongsan Park um, or Yongsan Garrison project, uh, they ask you, you know, how, what, what, which buildings are remaining? Right? So you could almost see the, the white parts are um, buildings that are will who um, right now uh, will stay. Uh, there are about 1,000 buildings. There are about 1,000 buildings inside the garrison, um, and they're, they're trying to keep about 130. So about 80, 90 percent um, will be gone. Um, and of course, that, you know, um, the process of selecting which one stays and which one uh, should be made way for open space uh, was a tedious process too. So it's not, you know, no one's really, you know, um, uh, no one's winning at this point. Um, but there is a big uh, project already finished, uh, and, 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 and it sets a precedent for Yongsan Park. Um, 
It used to be called Trans Hyalia. Uh, now it's called Busan Citizens Park. I don't know how many of you have been, but um, this is a an actual camp that was returned to the citizens of Busan, and, and they made it into a park. Uh, and uh, there was an international competition, and they took about seven uh, years or so to um, mitigate the soil contamination. Um, and now it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a park. And this is how it looks inside. You see these buildings used to be barracks. Concept Huts. Yeah. This is the, um, the officers club, uh, and there's some watchtower that still stands um, today. It's a it's a nice park. Um, Busan is very hilly, so in in, in a, a landscape like that, this you know flat uh, park is very much appreciated by the citizens. Um, and they have a uh, a building actually this building. Right here, uh, the Officers Club was converted into a museum, history, uh, history museum of Hialeah. And they have these sort of uh, stories. Um, you know, um, some Mr. Brown or Private Brown is you know, interacting with kids um, and so forth. So it's a nice museum, and you get a feel of what was there um, uh, during this um, army occupation and before that. Japanese occupation. It's a very nice park to visit, uh, I say. So this is uh, how it was uh, before it was returned to uh, citizens of Busan, uh, and this is how it looks today. Right? And this is the map of Busan Garrison with 1,000, little more than 1,000 buildings. Right? Um, and we, as a master planning team, we get a lot of requests. Right? Uh, of, you know, why, why are we deleting uh, and, and why are we not de deleting everything, right? I mean, there's debate here and there. It's, you know, this should be an ecological park. This should be a memorial. There is so many ideas and concepts and, and people talk a lot about what this symbolizes. Right? But they had never set their foot inside. Right? So, Who's right? Who's, who's the one who's leading the discussion here? Right. Um, but I want to say, does it really matter? I mean, you see this building, right? Officers met, right? It was some important officers, generals who go and had drinks and you know, um, had meals and so forth, right? And they converted into a, a certain museum. Um, Okay, the building stands, and so what? Yeah, let's save all 1,000 buildings. So what? So I, I, I want to call these buildings hard memory. Hard memory brings you some memories related to that building. But I think there's a soft memory, which is our stories, people's stories. People's story like George Flynn. <coughs> Without that, I think soft story has such a power that we don't know. And we're sort of hung up on this sort of hard memory that it's very expensive to convert one of these buildings into that. And even to maintain it, it's very expensive. How are you going to fill up all these buildings with? Now, what are you going to do with them? Just to show you what uh, soft state, what soft memory can do, um, this is a ghetto heroes uh, square in Krakow, uh, in Poland. Um, in the East Plaza, you see these chairs. It makes you wonder, you know, what are these chairs for? It was a, a parking lot, and they converted into a um, uh, a plaza. Um, so this square was known for having a, uh, a very short uh, memory uh, of the people uh, who passed by this place. Um, 
this was a uh, holding place for his children uh, before they were sent to concentration camps. So uh, the designer uh, of this plaza uh, got a hold of this photo of children holding his chairs on the way to the train, getting on the train to the um, concentration camp. And hence, the designer thought that she's obligated to do something about that. Right? How can we make public space be a little more... Um, and it can, can it capture some sort of sentiment value? Um, you can have recreational purposes, but how can you overlay this sort of story that uh, should not be erased. Um, so in, in, um, in, in 2013, um, about five friends of mine, we sat down together and talked talk about how do we archive it? Well, how do we sort of try to save all these soft memories um, that we're talking about? So we had um, uh, a photographer, we had a, a person who was interested in, uh, who was studying the history of K-pop, um, and, um, and, and so forth. And we had five people, and, and so we started uh, benchmarking other urban archives, um, mostly from sociology point of view and other uh, sort of anthropological uh, aspects. Um, so they were doing oral history, soundscape, mind mapping, surveys, and etc. Um, and, and, and by the end of it, we asked ourselves, and so what? Do we, are we a better people? Are we a better um, a human being because someone left the world of history? Or we know that you know, there's a recording of that place 20 years ago. Right? Um, how, how can we make that relevant? How can we make an archive that, it, that can be relevant for the people now and for the future. So we started, um, we, we called ourselves uh, Urban Memory Archive, um, in the archiving the soft memories of GIs, uh, onions and garrison. And we started uh, focusing on history, photos, music, and mapping. And um, we were fortunate enough to sit down with the, the uh, command, um, uh, UNC, uh, United Nations Command, and CFC. Um, uh, had a, we had a round table um, discussion. And we showed them what we were trying to do, what, what we wanted to do. And this was a conclusion. Um, this was the, the drawing of the rendering of the park, the Yongsan Park. And we found this photo of the veterans and their kids in front of the memorial, which is now being moved to um, Camp Humphreys. Um, we wanted to simply put the stories of these people in here. Right. Can we make it? It's, right, it's, we, we feel that this is missing, this part. So in the very beginning, we structured our archive this way. We, we thought it was a history and memory archive. And also it is a communication and sharing network. And on top of, uh, on top of this uh, data, we can create a learning and experience platform that could uh, sort of, uh, uh, allow people to react to these uh, uh, data sets that we collect. So, um, this is a little bit more systematic, but um, online database will collect um, uh, people's uh, uh, stories or, or, or photos or recordings, and we were uh, trying to put it in a, a location-based data so that we can have GPSs uh, on uh, GPS information on each of the data. Um, so each of these uh, uh, dots will have information. Um, 
And then we wanted to add user added content. So once we had that, we expected uh, people to react to those uh, entry, entries. And then we had curated content and, and we link it socially. Um, using this material, we could uh, create contents that will make people uh, react and, and also share their more uh, share their experiences, their memories. So in the very early on, we decided that it should be a crowdsourced, in, in crowdsourced project, um, archival project, instead of you know having experts going in and, and trying to interview all these people to their limitations. We we benchmarked all these other archival projects, and they had that sort of uh, limitation. Um, um, and, and it should be open source. And we decided to be non-governmental organization, NGO. Uh, and this was very critical because we knew there was growing, or there was already uh, anti-American sentiment uh, in, uh, in Korea. And also with Yongsan uh, base, I think I lost count, but I think there are about 13 organizations that are against whatever the public uh, government is doing, and also against um, uh, USFK. So we wanted to sort of stay away from all these government, um, intergovernmental uh, issues um, by being uh, uh, NGO. And and once we sort of start that up, we once we had the system in place, uh, we ran into problems. People were not participating because we we didn't know we, we had all these systems out and we had you know websites so that you could uh, upload your photos and and, and, and give us a location um, and, and so forth but people are not sh sharing but immediately we found that people wanted to search for people on the website that was <coughs> one thing that people really uh, got attached to and uh, this is an email from uh, Rich Kent, um, who lives in, I believe, Texas or somewhere. Um, I don't know Mr. In's first name. I worked with him at YDP uh, PC um, in 1969-1970. He enjoyed listening to my adventures in Korean countryside while uh, most of the other GIs spent all their time and money on their own that one. He helped explain Korean culture to me. Uh, here are a few places we visited. He's a civilian. Um, uh, it's a secretarial sorting and low-level coordination. So he sort of, Mitch Kent wanted to find Mr. M because he missed him. Right? He was looking for it um, uh, and, 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 and wanted to get back in touch with him. And throughout the, our uh, uh, archival project, um, there are a lot of peaks and valleys. Um, we have all of a sudden a lot of people joining, um, and, and it goes viral. Um, and we noticed that one of the largest peaks that we had uh, in recent history is the uh, Seoul American High School alumni. So this is a very close-knit group who shares time and space inside the garrison. And they see the value of you know, preserving their history and memory and photos in, in a place. Um, and uh, which goes to say, I want to um, uh, mention William White, a uh, uh, sociologist who uh, studied uh, public open spaces. He said, what attracts people most, it, it will appear, is among other people. And a lot of uh, scholars have speculated that internet is a new, uh, it's kind of sad, uh, but it's a new public space. And it, this applies, apparently, uh, it appears that this still applies to um, uh, online platforms. So we started opening up, um, we, we sort of uh, took a um, maybe 90 degree turn made, uh, instead of having an archival system, we created a networking platform. Um, so we ran it in parallel with uh, Facebook, um, trying to promote um, 
networking, um, people finding each other and talking about their experiences and so forth. Um, then, sort of, I had a chance to go visit 9-11 Memorial in New York. Um, and regardless of you know, how big and, and wonderful the, the memorial is, um, there was one space that I could not just, you know, leave. Um, that was the, the photo wall. Um, I don't know if you've been, but there is um, all the victims of 9-11. Um, the portraits are on this wall. And um, if you see faces, it really, you know, captures the, the sheer atrocity um, uh, 9-11, right? It, it, I mean, there are other artifacts that are like es, es, uh, escape stair that was there and they left it, um, they kept it, they preserved it. But, you know, all those, the, the column that, uh, that stood, um, it doesn't really capture people's um, um, uh, attention until you are faced with this 5,000 uh, portrait looking at you. And we, we thought maybe, you know, we should do something about that. Right? So what we started doing um, is we started collecting, uh, we call it in-processing card, because, you know, U.S. Army, when they check in Korea, they have to fill in in-processing cards, apparently. So um, we asked everyone who uh, has ever served and lived on the base, fill out these forms. Um, and what we're trying to do, we have about 100 people now um, of their time and where uh, exactly, which building, right? So we are trying to identify all 1,000 buildings with people, people's faith, people's uh, uh, rank, and what, whatever they were doing inside there. And we, we are trying to sort of create this sort of uh, um, a database where uh, each of these buildings are matched with human beings, rather than heart memory, just building, it's just building. Um, then we started um, uh, um, looking further into making sure that we have enough face time. We understand um, each other. Who, you know, we're trying to put face to Yongsan Garrison. Um, uh, so we started uh, having Yongsan Legacy Talks. Um, we are on to our 10th um, now um, in December. Um, but we had a historian come and speak, uh, Mr. Uh, Nam Sang So, who's here. Um, uh, we have uh, various people who spend their time and, and can, they, they want to share their stories. Um, so this is a platform where people can gather and they talk about their experiences. And um, another project that we started is a podcast. Um, we want to reach out to the people who are back in the U.S., back in the States. So we started this uh, crowdfunding project. And um, we barely made it. We uh, asked for five thousand dollars, and and uh, we're producing. This is the first uh, podcast recording that uh, we did uh, about a month ago. Um, so we're we're trying to make our content a little bit more user centric. Um, so we're trying to reach out to people, um, um, uh, young, old, uh, in Korea or abroad. And this, I think, uh, is a story of it. I think it should be a, a story of itself. It's, it's a German um, Chi. Um, someone I, I think we met, um, uh, my wife and I. And um, it's almost like time traveling when you meet this person. He's about 94 years old, um, and he was the the war correspondent um, for Reuters um, during the time of the Korean War. Uh, he spoke English, so he was the ear reporter, I believe. Um, and, and so he knows all the, the sites of battle, battle uh, sites. Um, and he 
is the one that he kept all the diaries of everything. Um, and after the war, in 1958, he, he spent his own money to travel all 17 countries who came to fight in the Korean War. Um, so he has, so this, he was showing this documentary. Um, this is uh, Chairman Chi. This is the office. He has all these stuff, right, information, photos, and everything in his office. Um, and he's the one resp responsible for all these Korean War men uh, veteran memorials in Korea, all 17 of them. So after meeting him, it made me wonder who, I mean, how many people have visited this memorial and how effective is it? Right? Having this memorial for the veterans who uh, came and, and, and fought for, for Korea. I'm sure it's very valuable, it is a very valuable um, uh, artifact that, uh, that should remind us um, um, for a long, long time. But I thought we could do more with all this technology that we have and, and um, uh, that uh, we should employ ourselves with different mindset in, in trying to understand what this does, what, what he was trying to do with this memorial. Can we do it better? Can we do it in different ways? So, um, I think, I, as, a, as a designer, I, I believe I work in a field of creative um, um, uh, industry, and I think, I believe in the power of uh, arts and culture. Um, and uh, it can really inspire people, and, and it's so abstract that you know, you're going to only read what you want to read. Like, you could be free of uh, confrontation, or I mean, you could have a good discussion, um, but at the same time, there's no right answer. It's not like history, where someone is writing it, someone is editing it. Um, um, so this is uh, one, uh, Sania uh, Mount. Uh, she's a Seoul American High School alumna. Uh, she came. Uh, and gave us a talk last uh, two weeks ago. Um, she's a singer and performer. She she loves the drama team, so American High School, and she's now a performer in, in Hollywood. Uh, New York, actually. New York, sorry. Um, and she wrote a book, a novel, based on her experience from Yongsan Garrison. And it, it was shocking to me, because she says in the book, and she said it, that for her, it was a prison. It felt like being in a prison to live inside Yunsan Garrison, which is a perspective that is not shared by Koreans. Koreans think that Yunsan Garrison is somewhat a, you know, um, uh, you know, an area that you know Americans would like to enjoy their American way of life. Um, but for her. Her perspective, looking back out to the world, the other uh, parts of the soul, was very, very different. And and so I, I want to promote all these uh, sort of people who spent time there, and also artists. I want to encourage artists and creative uh, people uh, to do creative works, produce creative products uh, based on the the data that we are getting. All these stories, like George Brent, can we? Can someone write a book about it, a novel, or a movie? It could be a beautiful movie. Um, when Samia was talking, we talked about having uh, maybe uh, producing a musical about Yongsan Garrison. So um, this is where we are at right now um, uh, as a sort of archival project. Uh, we want to generate creative works based on what we find and what we gather. Uh, and we want to inspire, reflect, and make people uh, reflect on what, what happened there. Um, and instead of you know, pointing fingers or uh, um, uh, 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 going into a battle mode, right? and I, I want us, everyone, to reflect on themselves 
and, and motivate people. To me, in, in that way, I think um, creative work can stay relevant to the times and, and its generation. And hopefully, by, through that um, uh, engagement of art and culture, people can continue to archive or share their memories of Yongsan Park in the future. And they will sort of, uh, again, uh, create uh, uh, more, generate more creative works. And I think this is a, I, I truly believe in the power of uh, uh, arts and culture uh, to be a part of uh, how we remember a place. So what I have learned from Yongsan Legacy so far, as I get to know more about Yongsan Garrison, the people, the stories, for some reason I become smaller. Because there's so much that I don't know, right? And when I when I go to these uh, meetings, public hearings and meetings for the master plan, everyone shows up as if they know everything. The historians, the the, the politicians, uh, the people who are anti, you know, young sound like people. Even them, so I don't I don't know what they know, but um, I think it, uh, when you know all these stories, you know, 3.5 million people stories, I mean, you're only a tiny person. Uh, I, in front of Chairman Chi, I become so small, I feel like I'm uh, an insignificant person. Right? Um, and I think through that, I, I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a great project, and I, I think um, uh, it iterate, reiterate that urban, urban space is a stage for human activity. It's not the building that makes people to dance. Right? It, it's, it's human stories. Um, I, I think we can only affect one person through someone else's story. It's not the building or the park. The physical environment cannot move people um, unless there is a spirit uh, in itself. So uh, scholars, between scholars, um, they, they're even talking about Yongsanology. They, they want to call it study of Yongsan because there's so much that they don't know. And there's so much aspect of Yongsan that really has a close ties to the miracle of Han River. Right? Um, at least, you know, it can be traced back to um, things that we know as Korean modern uh, culture today. Right? Um, there, there a critical need for academic forum to research and document Yongsan Garrison's impact on modern Korea. This, the, the, it has begun, and I, I'm, 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 I'm here to encourage you to be part of it. Um, you don't have to be part of the Yongsan Legacy Project, but I, I really wish uh, that uh, you could pick up uh, some of these stories and really like do research, like history, music, food, construction, technology, and automobile. It's all sort of, there's some links um, to Yongsan Garrison. Next year, Minister of Land and Transport, instead of spending money on the design phase, they're trying to um, provide research grants for researchers that are related to Yongsan Garrison and its neighborhoods. So um, I, myself, and, and the Yongsan Legacy wish to facilitate and bridge um, Korean scholars and, and international scholars. Um, uh, and to market, uh, or, or to show you what the, our website looks like, um, this is the, the webpage, yongsanlegacy.org. Um, and we have these sort of, uh, categories that are a little bit more easy, uh, approachable uh, for the public. Uh, we have Facebook, Meetup, and Instagram. And we have about 1,000 website users. We, uh, the recent update was in July, and uh, we have uh, about 1,000 people visiting. That's not, not bad. Uh, we have about 180 uh, registered unique members. 167 uh, followers, and so I think it's, it's 
uh, getting there, it's, um, um, and, and, and more people share, I think the content becomes a little more interesting. Um, and, and right now, we have about 150 stories um, on the website, uh, like George Green story, um, that uh, you may find it interesting, and you could also um, um, add to that. And this is the team, um, and I want to sort of uh, say thank you for a lot of people um, are here today, are, um, um, uh, I, uh, have really helped Yongsan Legacy uh, take off, um, and uh, I want to finish there. Thank you.
you mentioned there's a Yongsan legacy. Uh, basically, we're talking about the Yongsan uh, moving to a office. But like Ayurveda compound, it was on the other camps uh, throughout Korea. Perhaps like the competition can face me, they closed down. So perhaps uh, uh, Yongsan legacy is a more wider term for uh, other USFK uh, bases throughout Korea, which still exist and which closed down. So I would think the, when you have uh, an archive for Yongsan legacy project, uh, are you considering covering other camps as well as uh, Korea as they some of them closed down and some of them will be closed down? Right now, um, we're only focusing on Yongsan Garrison because most people who were um, stationed in other camps had relations with, they, they were uh, visiting Yongsan Garrison for PX, pickup or whatever. So we want to. I think for the public's um, uh, perception, um, I think it's smaller the better. Um, I mean, we can have a concise, and it, it would be a public park, so we want to sort of use that as our, to our advantage in making it a, a very concrete, uh, hardline area, rather than spreading all these energies on, on the other camps. Maybe in the, maybe in the distant future, we can open it up and maybe cover other camps. But uh, right now, we we are trying to capture at least you know, um, uh, Hanan Village, Ken Kim, and uh, I forgot the name of this uh, town. Um, the transportation uh, area. But uh, we want to stay within Yongsan just to, just to be sure and clear of 